This is Mrs. Terigno, and this is the Unit 2 Test Review for Geometry A. Now this video will focus specifically on the proofs, which is numbers 12, 14, and 15 in your review packet. Um, remember we're focusing on congruent triangles in this chapter. So a lot of your proofs are going to end up either by saying that two triangles are congruent, or you're going to be using two congruent triangles along with CPCF to say that either the sides or the angles are congruent. So just so you can kind of keep your focus, that's where you're really headed with all of these. Okay? Now the first step for a proof is easy. So in this first one, it says given that MNOP is a kite with ends P and N and PT is congruent to PS, the very first thing I'm going to do is just put exactly what I have down there for my given information into my proof. Okay. So I would say MNOP is a kite, and you can leave it at that. We really didn't give you much room to write here. And then I'll also say that PT is congruent to PS. Okay? So again, usually you would be able to fit that all in one line. Sorry about that. So let's go ahead and mark that, that PT, which is this little piece here, is congruent to PS. All right, now you don't know much about kites, and that's okay because we haven't talked about kites yet, and that's why I gave you the next line. It says PM is congruent to PO. That's one of the properties of being a kite, is that these two sides, PO and PM, would be congruent. Now, right here, I can see it's going to get hard to start marking my picture. And I have a pair of overlapping triangles here. I have this triangle from M to P to S laying on top of this triangle that goes from T to O to P. So you might find it helpful to draw those triangles separately so you can work with them separately. So I'm going to take a second here and just draw first triangle, and this is M, this is uh, S, and this is P, and then my second triangle looks something like this. It goes up like that, comes down, and this here is P, this up here is T, and this is O. So hopefully you can see how these two triangles laying on top of one another is what we have going on here. And I'm going to go ahead and mark in there that we know that PT is congruent to PS over here. And that PM, which is this longer side, is congruent to PO. Okay. Now would be a great time to step back and look at what we're trying to prove. We're pr trying to prove basically that these two triangles are congruent to one another. So this is where we want to start thinking about our triangle congruence theorems. Now the nice thing about having this proof set up in kind of a fill-in-the-blank format is not only do you know that you need to prove the triangles congruent, but I know I'm going to be using SAS to show that they're congruent. So looking at the information I have here, I have two sides here and two sides here. All I really need is the angle that's in between them. And you'll notice in both triangles, it's angle P. If you look back at your original picture, they share this angle right here, angle P. So we need to think about how could we say that angle P is congruent to angle P? Well, that's really just saying that angle P is congruent to itself, which is the reflexive property. And then we can say our very last step, that the triangles are now congruent. Triangle SMP is congruent to triangle TOP because of SAS, and hopefully you can now see that in your picture. And we've also shown it here. There's a side, a side, and an angle in between. Okay. All right, let's take a look at number 14. Number 14 also works with overlapping triangles, but I can't tell quite yet which triangles I'm going to want to focus on. So let's start by marking my given information. I'm given that angle ETN, which is ETN, is this angle right here, is congruent to SDN, 
so that would be this angle. And I'm also given that NT is congruent to ND. Knowing those two pieces of information, I think it looks like I'm going to be looking at this triangle here from N to E to T, and then I'm going to be looking at the triangle from N to S to D. Okay, those are my two overlapping triangles I want to focus on. So again, I'm going to try to draw those separately. I don't have a ton of room here, so I'm going to try to draw it a little smaller than it really is. So that's that top one. And then there's that bottom one. So the top one, this is point E. Up here is point N. And then down here in the corner is point T. This other triangle, I still have point N up here at the top. Then I have angle D down here and S down here. Okay. And just to mark in my given, here I have ND congruent to NT. And I have angle D congruent to angle T. Okay. Now in this one, if I'm looking big picture, oh, first of all, I guess before we do that, let's fill in that we know this because this is given. Okay, when I'm looking at big picture here, my ultimate goal is to get that these angles, angle NET, which is this one, and angle NSD, which is this one, are congruent. But remember I said at the beginning that really our focus here is on congruent triangles, and then we can use CPCF from there. So I would really like to get my second to last step to be that the two triangles are congruent and then I can jump to CPCF. That's just sort of a general strategy for you. And if you look here, that's exactly what we have written here in step three. In step three, we're going to get that triangle ETN is congruent to triangle SDN. So that's these. But before we can do that, we need one more piece of information because so far all I have is an angle and a side. If you look back at the original picture, they share this angle N. So I know that this angle N has to be congruent to this angle N because N is congruent to itself. So this here would be the reflexive property. Again, sorry about the lack of space to write there. And now that I've got that information, looking at those two triangles, I hope that one of your triangle congruence theorems jumps out to you. You've got two angles and a side that's in between, so that would be ASA. Okay. Now that we know our two triangles are congruent, I can say that any pieces of them are congruent because of CPCF. Okay, so CPCF is really, really helpful to you in a proof. Okay, let's look at our last one, number 15. Now, number 15 uses a circle, and there's something pretty tricky about circles um, that's actually very helpful to you. Um, the first thing I want to clarify is that these should be straight lines. So from O all the way to A, that's one straight line, and from C all the way to B, that's one straight line. This was just a flaw in and drawing here. So we're given that this is a circle and we're given that AB is congruent to CD. So let's see. I'm given that this is congruent to this. Okay? And that's given. Okay. Now, the next step says that OA has to be congruent to OB, and OC is going to be congruent to OD. I actually disagree with that a little. Okay, it's not that I disagree with this statement, but it's that there's more I can get from this statement. This is where the circle part comes in. All of these pieces, from O to A, from O to B, from O to C, from O to D, each one of those is called a radius. Now, most of you probably already know what a radius is. It goes from the center of the circle to the outside. And in a circle, the radius stays the same all the way around. So, by definition of a circle, or definition of radius, I guess you could say it either way, 
I know that all four of those pieces are equal to each other. So I'm going to be even more specific here. Instead of just saying that OA is equal to OB, I'm going to say that all four of these are equal. That OA is equal to OB, that's equal to OC, and that's equal to OD. Okay? Probably a better way to go. So all four of those pieces are equal, and I would go by definition of radius. You could also say definition of a circle. I would take either one. Okay, so now I know all of these pieces are equal. Okay. Now, I actually think that this proof gave you more information than what you needed, or it's making you do more steps than you needed, because right now I could get these triangles to be congruent by side, side, side. So if you were writing this proof on your own, I hope you would jump to that step next. Um, however, I see that this proof wants me to show that there are some vertical angles in here. And vertical angles are formed anytime two lines cross. So that would be these angles in the middle. Okay? So these two angles in the middle are congruent. That would be angle AOB and angle DOC. Okay. And then they're kind of guiding me to say that these, ang or that these triangles are congruent by SAS, which they are because I have side angle side here. Again, though, I think you could have gotten to side, side, side in that very last step and not even had to worry about the vertical angles. But we'll take what it gives us. I really just think you didn't need to know this, that AB was congruent to CD because you could have done the whole rest of this proof without it. Um, anyway, I digress. Here's triangle AOB, and that's congruent to triangle DOC. So now I know that this whole triangle here is congruent to this whole triangle here. And then my very last step should always be to say that my final step is true. So angle OCD has to be congruent to angle OBA. And that is by CPCF. Okay, I hope that that reduces some of your anxiety about these proofs. Um, if you do have any questions on them, you're welcome to write to me. Um, just email me over the weekend, or you can leave a comment on this video, and I will I will respond to you as soon as possible. And if you do it that way, everybody else can see it too and benefit from it. So, um, happy studying, and I will see you Monday.